Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our town hall tonight on June 4th. We're so excited to welcome you to our live stream and also to share all sorts of information with you as we begin the summer here at Holy Ghost Prep. To start tonight, we'd like to introduce a special guest, Father Jeff Duane. Father Jeff uh, is an alumnus of Holy Ghost Prep and the Provincial Superior of the Holy Ghost Fathers, and he's going to begin our uh, live town hall tonight. Father Jeff? Thank you, uh, Mr. Abramson, and good evening, everyone. It's good to reconnect with the Holy Ghost Prep community, even at a distance. Holy Ghost has a very special place in my heart as an alumnus and as a former president of the school. These are indeed very challenging and difficult days in which we are living. And prayer is an important part of our response as a people of faith. This past week, we celebrated the Feast of Pentecost. And I like to think that at Holy Ghost Prep, we know the power of the Spirit. This Holy Ghost is our namesake. And so I'd like to offer a prayer tonight to begin this town hall meeting, calling upon God to shower upon us all the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us on these days. So join me in praying in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious and generous God, we lift our hearts in praise and thanksgiving for your love. And the Spirit which strengthens and nourishes us. We humbly seek your grace and blessings during this time of unrest and anxiety. Send forth your spirit of wisdom to help us to listen and learn from each other as we seek to live in your love. Send forth your spirit of knowledge to open our hearts and minds to recognize your presence in our lives and in the world in which we live. Send forth your spirit of understanding that we may embrace this time as an opportunity to examine our faults and failures as individuals and as a society. Send forth your spirit of counsel and right judgment to enable us to move beyond fear and hatred, to come to appreciate the giftedness of those who are different from us. Send forth your spirit of piety and reverence to open our hearts and minds to love as you love us. Make Holy Ghost Prep a school of love where we come to know you fully in our lives. Send forth your spirit of fortitude and courage to strengthen us in our commitment to be instruments of reconciliation, healing, and peace in the world in which we live. And send forth your spirit of awe in the presence of the Lord to rejoice and celebrate in the power of your spirit to make all things new. Without you, all-powerful God, we are nothing, and we cannot accomplish anything without your spirit. Bless our school family, all students, parents, faculty, staff, and alumni, and grant us the grace and strength to be joyful disciples of your son. We make this prayer with faith and hope in your holy name, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Jeff, thank you, and uh, I'd like to bring Greg on the screen. Greg Garrison, the president of Holy Ghost Prep. Thanks, uh, Ryan. We're always, always super excited to see Father Jeff at different Holy Ghost Prep events. Thanks very much, Father. Greatly appreciate uh, your presence and your prayers, as always. And thank you for that uh, beautiful letter from the Spiritans uh, regarding the, um, uh, the challenges that we faced this past week with the, the death of George Floyd and the challenges that... Uh, all of our uh, cities are, are struggling with right now. So thank you very much. Thank you. Earlier this week, I wrote to you about events surrounding the tragic senseless death of George Floyd. And yesterday we were called by our Holy Father to neither tolerate nor turn a blind eye to racism. As I sit here tonight, communities around the world continue to struggle with enormous questions that have once again been brought to our attention. Our smaller community must also address these questions. We have students and families and alumni of Holy Ghost Prep who have faced racism. 
How do we support them? We have families who have moms and dads, alumni sons and daughters in law enforcement. How do we support them? We have students who face very real and difficult questions. How do we answer them? We know that we must ensure that we have a safe place for them to talk and be heard, a safe place for them to listen and respond, and a safe place for them to grow in compassion, understanding, and acceptance. As I reflect on this, I look back on where we were not too long ago. More than 12 weeks ago, we walked off the campus of HGP and thought we would be back in a few weeks, and we were wrong. Days became weeks, weeks became months, and postponements became cancellations. And if you're at all like me, those early days of March were an emotional roller coaster, at times feeling insurmountable without an end in sight. And then something happened. Holy Ghost prep happened. We started with Ghost 1.0. We sent a survey, we had town halls, and we developed Ghost 2.0. Our faculty and staff engaged our students and families. We learned. We gave a voice to our community and we made change happen. We filled our screens with the faces and voices of Holy Ghost Prep. We as a community made videos on our phones and on our computers to share our stories, our laughter and our songs. And our community listened we listened over 40,000 times to those videos over the last 12 weeks. And listening to one another gave strength and resilience to our community. We called upon our extended family to support one another and tens of thousands of dollars were raised. We paraded on our campus to celebrate and honor our graduates and we lifted our hearts and we showed our spirit to face down the challenge of distance and open the opportunity for what would become a lasting change and tradition for Holy Ghost Prep. And yet in the last week, our world is confronting another call to action and the emotions can seem insurmountable. Is there a path forward and end can we make the world a better place? As I sit here tonight, I have no great answer or solution, but I can say this, Holy Ghost Prep will be a place of resilience, faith, and action. Holy Ghost Prep will be a place where challenges will be met with the energy and confidence to find opportunities and encourage growth and Holy Ghost Prep will be a place of transformational change where our students, faculty, and staff are building a community, never perfect, but always a work in progress and always in one heart and one mind. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Uh, that was great. Uh, I know that many of our families certainly appreciate those words, uh, there's just so much um, question that's going on right now in the world. And many of our families, certainly our students, are looking to Holy Ghost Prep and our teachers and our uh, their classmates to provide some stability uh, in a place that sometimes it doesn't always seem stable. So thank you so much uh, for sharing those thoughts with us tonight. You're, you're uh, quite welcome. Um, I'd like to bring our principal, uh, Kevin Burke, onto the screen. If I can find him, there he is. And uh, Kev, how are you? I'm doing well, Mr. Iberson. Uh What a beautiful prayer by uh, Father Jeff and what uh, wonderful words by Mr. Garrison. Um, I think your, your point about there's so many questions, right? There's so many questions out there. And I think Mr. Garrison said it pretty clearly. We might not have the answers, um, but I think we know that education is part of the solution. Education on, on, on a lot of levels. So, um, you know, thank you, Mr. Garrison. That was, that was extremely well expressed. I don't have much of a transition, Mr. Abe, I'll be honest. Uh, you know, obviously the serious things happening in our world, uh, but we also recognize that tonight is a town hall and we wanna get information 
uh, to our families. Uh, but I think before we do that, uh, I'm going to express a message that Mr. Garrison said that we're here for you. So if, if, if our students need us, uh, if our teachers need us, we're here for you to, uh, to help everyone through this tough time. I'm going to invite onto the screen our director of athletics. I know there were some questions at recent town halls about what athletics is going to look like this summer and what it's going to look like in the fall. So I welcome our director of athletics, Mr. Craig Conlon. Before we start, Mr. Conlon, yes, sir. I ask how long has it been since you had a haircut? <laughs> <laughs> it's been way too long. Mr. Chapman's going to be after me like he's going to be after the kids. Yes, he will. Hopefully, hopefully he doesn't see that. I'm going to turn things over to you. I know you have some uh, updates or maybe some some things that we're paying attention to as we plan for this summer with athletics and in the fall. Let's just say I feel like Gordon Gecko from Wall Street. The kids won't understand that, but the parents may have to give them a little point of reference on that. Um, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, Mr. Burke, for handing that off to me. I uh, appreciate it very much. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a, one, another one of our outstanding Holy Ghost Prep Town Hall meetings. We're thankful you can join us. As Mr. Burke just said, my name is Craig Conn, and I'm the athletic director here at Holy Ghost Prep. Right now, I'm going to remain extremely optimistic, positive, and upbeat about our upcoming summer camps and the start of school back to school classes and our fall sports. I like where we're heading. I spoke with Sean Kelly, the assistant executive director for district one in the PIAA yesterday. And along with my sources here at HTP, meaning Mr. Abramson and um, Mr. Doherty, I was told that the state governor is planning to move Southeast Pennsylvania, including Bucks County into the yellow phase tonight at midnight, which is great news. Unfortunately, while in the yellow phase, the HTP campus will remain closed. Once we enter the green phase, it will be up to the governor, the CDC, the Department of, Edu of Education, and HTP leadership to determine the necessary guidelines that will be needed to be followed. But an update on summer camps. As we move into the yellow phase, we're hoping uh, that Southeast Pennsylvania can move into the green zone. And if we do, we may be able to host some summer sport camps at HGP. Probably not until sometime in July at the earliest, but again, remaining optimistic. All of our sport camps are taking a wait and see attitude um, that we're really excited about. Again, optimistic. Baseball, tennis camp, ultimate camps uh, as of now, but that could change now with Southeast Pennsylvania moving into the yellow phase. Soccer, basketball, track, and lacrosse, again, in a wait-and-see mode. Hopefully, we can pull something out in July and August. Rowing is intended to have their learn-to-row camp the first week in August, based on permits to use the lake. For our fall sports, an update on that. Again, staying positive, optimistic, hopeful. We're hoping to begin s s classes and school and fall sports on schedule as usual. The opening day of fall sport practices and tryouts is going to be August 17 of 2020. Shortly, we will add the PIAA physical forms onto our HGP website next week so that the fall sport athletes can get their physicals over the summer to be ready for August 17th. New physicals must be completed after June 1st, 2020, and then pass those physicals, those completed physicals to Mr. Jacoby, our athletic trainer. We're also in discussions now about the 2019-2020 Athletics Recognition Night, and we should have news to report on this shortly. I hope this info helps. I'm excited again about Bucks County moving into the yellow phase tonight at midnight, and I'm looking forward to going green as soon as possible. If anything Absolutely. change, I'm sorry? Mr. Conlon, you are a popular person on the chat. We have uh, we have some questions for you from the, from the audience. Oh, gosh. Gotcha. Well, <laughs> so the first one, the first one I think is an easy one. Um, is there a preferred way that members of the Holy Ghost community can contact someone if they have questions about current events or things that are going on? I think that what we would probably say, if it's a question about a specific camp uh, that's happening or not happening, that they would want to contact that camp director directly. Would you agree? Yeah. Absolutely. They can actually email me as well, and I can forward it to the proper camp director as well. That may be easier. 
Sure. Uh, another great question is, um, are there any recommendations for students who will not be able to obtain the visit with their doctor uh, in order to get the PIAA state mandated forms? That's a great um, question. And I'm, I, my question. guess is that the PIAA will be providing guidance on that soon, since there's yeah. probably a lot of people in that same position. Yes. I'm anticipating, that, like you had just said, the PIAA is going to provide information shortly on trying to get into our doctors. Uh, again, the physicals need to be completed after June 1st um, and then before August 17th to start of fall sports. One thing that's probably important, a lot of people have been asking us about the recent guidance that the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania put out about the opening of schools and the different levels of uh, the red, the yellow, and the green. One thing that they did put on there very specifically was that they had not provided specific guidance to youth sports or to school sports. So some of those questions that we all have uh, are still unanswered by the state. And so we're all in that holding pattern waiting for right. some guidance from the state of Pennsylvania. Correct, correct. But again- One more question for you. I'm sorry, yes. go ahead. Again, staying optimistic, we're hoping for the best. We're planning on August 17th. We have a question here. Uh, juniors who need well visits and shots can get appointments in time. I think that the answer is still the same. We're doing, uh, we'll assume that the state is going to make adjustments based on the reality that some people are just not going to be able to get to their doctors. Uh, and so we'll have to wait and see what that, what that guidance is from the, from the state. And a lot of info will also be coming out from Mrs. Bushick as well. Our school nurse and Mr. Jacoby, our athletic trainer. Here's a question for summer camps. When you click on the links for summer courses, some are not there for selecting. For example, financial literacy, finance are not on the form. So we are going to answer those questions. That's a great segue from Robin Beerhalter. And we're going to say good night to Mr. Conlon. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we're going to bring in, uh, bring back Mr. Burke and Mr. Helsley, who are going to be able to help us with that question. You're getting a little quick with the questions. You're asking questions to Mr. Conlon. He has no idea on that one. And and I also want to go back a little bit, Mr. A. Excuse me. Could, could, we just, could we just say one thing in case I want Mr. Helsley to be prepared? One of the struggles that we've had with the live streams, uh, Mr. Burke, is that you freeze. And so I just I want us all to be in a position to be able to cover in case that happens again. Please continue. I called and I asked for help before this one. So I think we're going to be good. I also want to, Mr. Abe, if you don't mind, because I think uh, there was a question about who to contact for current events. Obviously, it's, if it's in regards to summer camps for athletics, you want to reach out to Mr. Conlon. Um, but if, if our students are uh, or our faculty are, are working and, and uh, relating to the events that Mr. Garrison and Father Dwayne spoke about, please reach out. If you're a student, reach out to a teacher or a counselor or, or an administrator uh, so that we can have the conversations needed. And if you're, you're a faculty or staff member, reach out to an administrator uh, to, to express those things. We have message boards on Schoology uh, that are available if, if, if students feel comfortable in that setting. Um, but but make sure you reach out. Is I think the most important thing uh, if you have a concern. No, oh, that's a great answer, and and I think that uh, one of the uh, great parts about uh, Ghost Online has been that we've been able to really kind of ramp up that ability of people to be thinking. There's always that opportunity to reach out, uh, no matter what time of the day it is. That you always know that um, you have a path to be able to communicate. Before we transition into Go Summers, I think the most important thing for our summer camps for athletics and for the fall for athletics is to know that Mr. Conlin is on top of the PIAA and what they're doing and, and the State Department, what they're doing in regards to the safety of our athletes and participation. Uh, it is a little wait and see, but clearly he's not getting any haircuts. So all he's doing right now is waiting and seeing. I had to take one more shot. <laughs> you guys are just jealous. <laughs> you look at Gordon Gecko got a shout out. <laughs> that's, that's unbelievable. No, but Kevin, you you raise a good point. The safety of our students, the safety of our young men and our teachers and staff, that's paramount. That is most important. If it, if if there's ever a question, we're not going to do something about our kids or young men or teachers in jeopardy. So, thank you, Mr. Conlon. We appreciate it. Thank you. And now uh, a transition to our Dean of Academics, Mr. Helsley. We are excited about Go Summer and a little overwhelmed, which will- I'm so excited about it. 
the the enrollments are great, huh? Yeah, the enrollments have been fantastic. We've been uh, registrations have been uh, online for just under a week now. Uh, we rolled everything out last week, and we have right now we have over one hundred and seventy unique course registrations, um, which is beyond any expectation that that we had. And it's the, the response has been super positive and and overwhelming and and awesome. And I'm excited to get started. Everything starts Monday. We have a handful of classes starting on Monday, um, so I'm psyched to get into it. I'm really looking forward to it. Well, then let's jump right in. Why don't you give a little brief overview? I know people know about it, but maybe just a little bit for those who might, and then we'll meet the uh, the stars of the show, our teachers. All right. So this is the first year that we're, we've introduced Go Summer. And like we said, it, it's something that we're really, really excited about. Um, and we've done a lot of work in the in the last month or so to get this off the ground and get everything, get everything going with it. Uh, one of our motivations behind creating and offering Go Summer was to give the Holy Ghost Prep students a chance to stay engaged over the summer. Uh, we're very mindful of that gap that happens over the summer, and we didn't want to uh, miss any opportunity that we had to make sure that that gap remains as small as possible. Plus, with our experience with Ghost Online, we learned a lot about um, online education and, and teaching and learning from home. Um, so we thought now's as good a time as any to transition that into some work over the summer. So. Our motivation was to pursue and provide um, a lot of our Holy Ghost students for additional enrichment opportunities. Um, you know, and, and we're going to hear from a couple of courses and teachers tonight um, that really speak to those enrichment opportunities, like jazz improvisation is one course that we have, and, and video game design. And it's really a unique opportunity uh, to study something that you might not have during the normal academic year. We were also focusing on the idea of earning academic credit for the actual school year. Um, you know, some some students have a lot of classes, seven classes, and we thought it would be a great opportunity for us that you could earn some of that GPA credit and then possibly during the school year, uh, decrease your, your course load a little bit to focus on, uh, you know, six classes instead of seven. So, you know, this Go Summer presented us a great chance to be able to do that. And, and we're really hoping that um, the results are positive. Uh, and then finally, you know, we know that, um, you know, college is an ever increasing competitive market. and We were looking for our students to have an opportunity to really diversify their academic record and resume. Um, and then one of the best ways that we thought to do that would be able to offer really unique and interesting and diverse classes over the summer where students have a little bit more time um, and we have teachers that are willing to do it uh, and we have tools that enable us to do it. So, you know, we really thought that was a great, uh, a great opportunity for us. With Go Summer, there are are essentially three different types of courses that are being offered. The first type is for GPA credit. So we have a number of courses, uh, depending on what your grade is, they will actually count towards your GPA. Um, and some of our core classes like physics honors and geometry honors, those are classes that would take place during the school year. So they would cover your academic requirement for those particular classes during the year as well. Uh, and we have a number of classes that are gonna count towards GPA credit. We also have a number of co-curricular courses, like I said, jazz improvisation, 2D, 2D game design, and we're going to hear, hear from a few of our uh, really awesome and exciting co-curricular classes from some of our teachers tonight. And then finally, for our freshmen and our sophomores, we have some enrichment opportunities um, to kind of build some skills and continue to work on skills like organization and study skills and time management. Um, these two courses that we have designed for incoming freshmen and rising sophomores, we're really, really excited about. Um, you know, give us an opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, help some of those students um, really hit the ground running as, as their high school year begins and as their sophomore, which is a really rigorous year, as their sophomore year begins as well. Uh, there is a full course and uh, listing and description on the Holy Ghost Prep website under academics. And you can see there it says Go Summer and there's a full description there. And it's also been posted on the Schoology class pages for, for all the boys to take a look at. Um, if you have any questions about Ghost Summer classes or descriptions or anything like that, um, feel free to contact me. My email address is listed there. Um, so I'm, I'm eager to answer any kind of questions that you have and, and help you through the process. Mr. Helsley, before we go on to meeting some of the teachers tonight, we want to go back to that question that was asked that I think you will be able to answer better than anyone uh, about some of the summer courses. So we had we had such a, a, an overwhelming reactions to two courses in particular uh, to finance uh, finance and investment with Mrs. Kim Fina and financial literacy with Mrs. Miss Mary Pat Conville. So we reached a number and we felt like at that number it was kind of you know it was a full class 
part of our reasoning behind closing the registration on that, it, it's a couple of different things. Um, one, we felt that we had we were at a number that would maximize the effectiveness of the class. And we wanted to make sure that the students that were enrolled in it would be able to get the most out of that class. Um, so we capped it on a specific number. Um, the benefit, you know, one side effect to that is that um, we are planning on offering both of those courses next summer. Um, so if your son is unable to register for it now, we are going to be offering it next summer. As a result of that, um, you know, we've kind of prioritized um, the students that are, are going to be in that class. And we're going from rising seniors will be the first ones in and then rising juniors and then we'll go to sophomores from there. Uh, but rest assured, we are going to offer both of those classes next summer. So if you were unable to get into it this year, we'll be available for you to take next year. So um, we would like to introduce you to some, some of our teachers here at Holy Ghost and some of the classes that we're going to be offering through Ghost Summer. So I want to bring on the screen uh, our first teacher, Mr. Jim Hoban, um, and he's going to talk to you all a little bit about our summer social justice course. Hello, everyone. It, uh, it's an honor to be a, a part of the summer program. I'm looking forward to this a lot. I actually teach the social justice class uh, at a local college. So uh, this, is, this is a good opportunity for me to, to bring it into our ghost classroom. Um, and this class is um, actually I'm in the midst of teaching it right now at the college. And this class is extremely pertinent uh, to what is happening in the world. Uh, so between COVID uh, and, you know, disparities in healthcare and economics and um, the tragedy uh, that, uh, of George Floyd's uh, passing, uh, murder, essentially, uh, and how that gets handled in the world and what, what do we do with that as a Catholic school uh, and specifically as a spirit in school with a global vision for the world. Uh, there are a couple uh, of angles uh, short term. Um, uh, not short term, uh, at the micro level, right? What, what kind of reactions are we having personally to what's happening in the world? We'll investigate that. Uh, and also at a macro level, what, what, what documents are out there? What research is out there? What information is out there uh, for us to consider um, as we, you know, you're, you're going out into the world. Uh, you'll be in college. You'll be going into college next year. You know, what are the resources that you can look to uh, to help form yourself and make good decisions about how to be in the world? So we'll certainly consider current events and we will also consider other things, environmental issues uh, and just social justice issues uh, in general. It's a half credit class uh, as a normal theology class is in the school year. Um, so that would be the same. It will run half the length of, of the, it'll only be a three week class. So uh, it'll be compressed and we'll be busy. So I'm very excited uh, to be a part of this and I'm looking forward to having, having some guys join me. Awesome. That sounds like a really thought provoking and, and interesting class and, and very pertinent and timely. So um, and that yeah, means all it's going to be very challenging. I think it'd be good conversations for our boys to have too. And, and, you know, um, very timely and pertinent, as you said. So, yeah. um, and your social justice class begins on June 22nd and Correct. it runs for three weeks and that is available for rising seniors who would be taking uh, social justice for their senior year. So if you have not registered for that, um, you know, please take a look at the registration forms on the website. So Mr. Helsley, we do have uh, a question before we go on to our next teacher. Someone is asking, are there going to be any on on campus classes this summer? And I think the answer right now is that there are no classes being held on campus, uh, but we're being flexible to a change of that mm -hmm. should that opportunity exist uh, based on the recommendations provided by the state. Uh, all of the Go Summer classes have been planned to this point to be conducted virtually. And if we need to change that to come on campus, um, that's certainly something that we're you know open to and possible. So. We have another question for you, Mr. Helsley. You are a popular guy. Um, a question about uh, rising seniors. So are you saying that rising seniors who haven't been able to register for the finance course will still be able to register? Uh, can you answer that one? So Mrs. Gashevsky, I actually have an email from you that I have yet to respond to, and I will be responding to that that will answer your question specifically directly. Um, so just hold tight for that, and that will be coming shortly. I have a specific answer for that. 
And Pat, one more question for you before we move on. How do you know whether or not your child was registered for the class they chose? So when a registration period closes, which is usually the Friday before uh, Friday before the session begins, um, I will be emailing out uh, everyone that registered for it to confirm uh, and, and make sure that everything is, is ready to go. Um, so there'll be communication with that. We do have a session starting on Monday and the students that are enrolled in those beginning sessions have been contacted. We have another session beginning on the 22nd and those students will be contacted the week prior as well. Excellent. And I know you have some more people to introduce. Yes. So uh, our next teacher that we're going to we're going to hear from is Mrs. Maria Lear Fortino, and she's going to tell us about our Latin American studies class. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm very excited to be teaching this course uh, this summer. I haven't taught this course in for a couple of years. Um, it, for me, this is a very high level course. It really is an opportunity for the boys to engage in more of a college level course. And even though this course is only three for three weeks, usually this would be in a, a year long course. Um, I think the topics that we're going to be touching upon are going to be so interesting. Um, they're really going to be engaged in conversation and discussion. Um, the three main things that we will be covering in this course that I think will be really um, so very interesting for them is talking about the CASA system, the, the class of racial uh, system. This seems very um, important with what's going on today. How do these, how does the social class system, how does that affect what we're, you know, what happens in the US, but in the Americas as well. This is not just an issue that is only uh, designated to the US. Um, another point is we're gonna be discussing the slave trade, the slave trade coming from Africa and also the slave trade of the indigenous people. And how does that change over a course of time in Spanish colonial times? Uh, and then how does the church and the, you know, the Spanish government play into this? And then of course, notions of independence. Who inspires in the, the notions of independence? It's coming from Europe, it's coming from the US. These are all um, the topics that will be converging and bringing them together. And to really talk about how invaluable these history lessons are and how do, the, how do those issues and how do those lessons carry over to today? So I think the students and I were gonna have a really just fantastic time, you know, diving into these topics um, and really, you know, collaborating, you know, having big discussions on these ideas and to bring art and art and literature into these topics. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. That sounds really fascinating and interesting. I read the course description for that when I was putting everything together and I was very intrigued by it. I'm wondering if I could if I could join that class and, and sit in on Absolutely. that. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, Pat, before we go on to um, our next introduction, another question for you in the comments section. <laughs> we're going to we're going to bring that up. Um, I believe the governor announced yesterday that counties in, in the yellow and green phase can resume in person school effective July 1st. Will this affect any of the plans? I know that one of the one of the things that was a big topic on media and the television and newspapers uh, as relates to schools was that in-person education could start on July 1st. What was not as popular was the list that was like this long of all of the things that a school has to have in place before you could bring those students on campus. And while we are uh, diligently working through that list, we also just got the list. And so um, I, again, I think the, the answer is that we're being uh, open to the possibility of some things changing, but right now we're, we're going to focus on online uh, education. Yeah, and as, as you know, things develop and, and things change, we'll obviously be in, in communication, you know, if, if the possibility is there to come in, then, you know, we can obviously take advantage of that. Um, so uh, next up, I would like to introduce is uh, Mr. Matt Jordan. He's going to be teaching our cinema studies class. Uh, at the end of the summer. And this is another one that I, I really want to take as well. I, again, I read the course description. I was, you know, I haven't seen most of the movies that you had uh, said you were going to preview and said you guys were going to discuss. So I'm really intrigued by uh, by the cinema studies class. So Mr. Jordan, would you like to tell us a little bit about it? Sure, sure. Um, yeah, this is actually a class that I taught um, at HTP a few summers ago, and um, it was a big hit. Um, and and I'm updating that. So uh, it just covers uh, a subject that I really love, the art of movie making. 
um, with a focus that I can have in uh, an English class where it's uh, literature and writing. I definitely incorporate a lot of film and TV in those classes. Um, we watched One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, LA Confidential, and we watched a couple episodes of Mad Men, the show Mad Men, all during cyber learning. And, and uh, it was actually very effective. We, we read the uh, screenplays along with them and they, they did presentations and, uh, and, and it was very, and a very popular uh, thing that uh, students had. They're very enthusiastic about all this stuff. So I'm gonna be pushing the envelope with them a little bit. Uh, we're, I'm picking six classic foreign and American films uh, with a variety of styles and from a variety of eras. And uh, there are six sessions. They would watch uh, one movie before each session and I will have prepared for them uh, other readings uh, for them to do. And, and basically each of the six sessions will be us uh, in a seminar type of uh, uh, setting, uh, just going over what we, you know, what we thought of the movie and what we loved about the movie. Uh, and to try and give them a sense of uh, movie making as a, as a form of storytelling, a very dynamic form of storytelling that they may not think about when they're just watching, you know, they're very visual, you know, they have a pretty high, uh, you know, variety of things they've seen, but we're looking to, I'm looking to um, show them that there's uh, different aspects to this art, uh, whether it's writing or acting or directing or editing. So. Um, so they won't be watching the movies that uh, maybe they've already seen, but I'm hoping to instill a love uh, of some movies they never would have encountered before uh, in this class. So uh, that's that's basically the, the gist of the, the three weeks we're doing. That sounds awesome. Um, I'm going to check out some of those movies. And when I when I looked at the, the description, I haven't seen most of those. Um, mm -hmm. And, it, you know, it's a really fascinating stuff. And I would, I'd be eager to dive into those and see what some of those are. Yeah. The great, the great part of it is this, uh, it's a great, it's just a great fast way into another culture and another world. Um, so, you know, the, you can get a great sense of Japan by, by looking at a Kurosawa movie and, 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 uh, some of the other movies too. Sure. Mr. Jordan, I think that was uh, the lead into my question. Uh, uh, we actually have what's a that? Question in the chat asking you, um, why study movies? Why study movies? Oh well, <laughs> you know, have you heard? It's a great, it's a great look into a foreign. No, um, it's just such an immediate, immersive experience when you you have when you watch. You know, it, you can have that with with books, and I really promote that all the time. And I'm always picking literature that I want to just pull students right into. Um, not all literature can do that. Depends on the audience. Uh, but there's something about uh, uh, about watching a film of, of uh, experiencing vicariously that life with that with these characters that's just just really special and dynamic. And I, I think that's why I want to continue using it, not just in this summer class, but in my other classes, uh, along with uh, along with all the other great literature that we read. Awesome. Sounds great. Uh, so our last uh, our last teacher that we're going to bring on the screen um, is Mrs. Kim Fina. She's mother of Henry Fina, recent graduate. Uh, so congratulations. Um, and as I understand it, you're in the middle of a thunderstorm. Thank you. So um, if you pull in Mr. Burke and we lose right. power, we know why. <laughs> uh, so you're going to tell us a little bit about uh, the finance and investment course, what kids that are enrolled in that can expect for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I am in the middle of a huge thunderstorm. So hopefully things will go well. Good evening, everyone. Um, so normally the summer finance course has been taught um, in person. So part of our challenge has been moving it online, but I'm trying to see that as an opportunity. Um, we were incredibly fortunate a few years ago to receive a $25,000 donation from Dominic Federico to establish the Frank Federico Student Investment Fund. And this is a fund that is actually managed by our students. So to um, be able to assume that fiduciary responsibility of managing that fund, students are able to enroll in the summer finance course and they will learn the basics of investing. They will also um, learn investment strategies. They will practice mock investments, play some stock market games and all of that. They will also learn how to analyze stocks. Um, but they're also going to explore the world of finance. And this is where our challenge became an opportunity in that we have multiple Zoom meetings, lots of Zoom meetings set up with 
HDP alums and parents of former students who are going to help us explore the different aspects of the world of finance. So I'm really excited about that part of being able to bring so many alums in to connect with our current students and let them explore all these different fields. Um, they are also, at the end of the course as a capstone, each student will get to analyze a stock of their choice and then make a pitch to the class that that is perhaps a stock that the fund would look to invest in next year. Uh, it is a half credit course, so it will be fast paced as similar to what Mr. Hoban said about his course. There will be some work, but I think there's gonna be a lot of fun and it should be exciting. And hopefully we'll see some recovery in the summer as the economy begins to open up and students will get to experience that opportunity to look into those stocks. I think that sounds super cool. I want to take it. We do have some people who have uh, asked if they can take that class so that they can learn some of those things as well. And Kim, one of the things that's super unique about that program is that the, the Frederico Fund is real money. That isn't, um, you know, some, some hypothetical pool of money. That's cash sitting in a bank account. It is real money that they, so it is a serious responsibility for the students, but what an opportunity. I don't know of another school that has this student investment fund. So it is a great opportunity for our Holy Ghost students to have this experience, but it is real. Yeah, yeah it's super cool. Uh, Mrs. Fina, thank you. Uh, we're gonna go back to Mr. Helsley. Uh, Mr. Helsley, all sorts of questions for you. So we're gonna yeah. go through a couple of them. Um, the first one is, um, who do I contact about an incoming freshman to get his schedule? So that would be that would be me. Um, and they are um, to get on to send me, Mrs. Simbalski, send me an email. And we'll, we'll make sure that you get on the schedule and you get your uh, your power school pet username and password. Uh, and I can set you up with that. So um, you can reach out to me and I'll take care of that. Uh, the next question we have is, can you comment if the typical summer class assignments were posted yet? And if not, when they will be posted. So every class is going to be different because the content of everyone is different and the the, the pace of everything is, is kind of different. So the typical summer assignment, I don't really know how to describe a typical summer assignment because for every class, they're going to be different. Um, you know, a movie class, there might be an analysis and the finance class, there's a there's a, a stock pitch. So everything is, is kind of different. Um, all the teachers that are teaching a summer course right now have access to uh, the Schoology pages that the summer courses are going to be run through. As we continue to get registrations, I'm going to add students to those Schoology classes. Um, so you'll be able to actually see what's in the class before it actually starts. And you'll be able to get a, a pretty good idea of, of what some teachers are going to be expecting from that. Um, I've asked that teachers uh, communicate to the, the students that are enrolled in their classes prior to the class beginning, the week before, um, to contact them through email. Uh, it was the email that was submitted on the registration just to explain some expectations for the course, some more specific details about what they can expect to do work wise and, and, and virtual meeting wise. Um, so individual teachers are going to be reaching out with what the specific expectations are. And does a parent have to register their son or should he do it himself? He should do it himself. <laughs> uh, we have a question about how would the jazz improv class work? Is there a set schedule to be online? For example, so Mr. Devine, our, our guitar teacher, is, is teaching this class. And the way that he explained it to me is that there would be a mix of um, online, uh, you know, face to face online virtual time where there could be some practicing done. And then there's some at home stuff with recording and submitting some recordings and overlaying. Um, and there's some some stuff to do on the own on, on the student's own. And there's a little bit of practice involved with it. So there is a there is a mix. Now, as far as the set schedule goes, there will be specific times that um, you know, Mr. Devine and the rest of the jazz improv class would meet uh, and he'll he'll make those clear when he starts his class. And we have some questions which we're going to turn over to uh, Mr. Uh, Burke in a second. But before we do that, I want to make sure we're going to bring Mr. Jordan back on real quick because we want to make sure that everybody gets a shout out when they get a shout out on the on the comments. And I'll see if I can find it real quick as I scroll through. Dan Martin wants to make you know, make sure you know. That one flew over the cuckoo's nest, still <laughs> my favorite because of Mr. Jordan. So we want to make sure you get credit for that. Thanks, the chat. Hey, I want to say hi to Dan. I haven't talked to you in a while. Good to, good to hear from Dan Martin. Just says everybody's watching our live stream. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> Jordan. So, um, Mr. Elsie, we're going to bring Mr. Burke 
back on the screen to answer some of the questions that we've gotten on the chat that, that might be a little bit easier for him to answer or for you to share the answer. Uh, so the first one is, um, what is covered in the HGP Foundations course? So I think there's two parts of that course. Um, there's one, the academic, so looking at study skills and time management um, and some of the skills that we know are important for uh, high school students. So to kind of uh, connect those uh, gaps that might be there so that students are ready on that side. So there's the academic components that are getting them ready for the rigor of high school at Holy Ghost Prep. The second part, probably of, of, of equal importance, is there's an opportunity to bond. They're going to be with their classmates. And I know our students come from a lot of different other schools. Uh, so for, for them to meet other students and to have a group that they know and connect with before they enter the building in September is going to be a really, really helpful thing as well. So there's a number of faculty members who are going to participate in that. So they'll get to meet some teachers as well. Um, they'll get to meet their classmates and they'll get some academic enrichment to help them be ready with their study skills for freshman year. We have a question that uh, I know was a topic uh, that we talked about today earlier. And uh, when will mandatory summer reading assignments be posted? So summer reading is going to look a little different this year. Uh, we're, our focus is going to be more on enrichment and, and bridging the gap between when we left school uh, and when we come back to school in September. Uh, and we want to focus the students more on doing some individual work over the summer that can get them ready for next school year. And those assignments will be posted on June 22nd. Excellent. And we have one more question uh, that we're going to uh, toss in there real quick for both of you. And that is, what should sophomores expect this coming school year? I think that question is really to say uh, something that we've talked about a lot, which is uh, what are we planning in terms of the start of the school year in September? I, I'll go and follow the optimistic point of view of Mr. Conlon. And I think some of the things that we're hearing recently are making us very optimistic that we'll be here on campus in September and, and we're excited. We will be taking measures to make sure our students are safe. I know we've talked about this at past town hall meetings, how we have planning committees. Uh, one of those planning committees is dedicated to health and safety. One is dedicated to, to education planning and they work very closely because we want our students to be on campus. We feel confident that they'll be on campus, but if they're gonna be on campus, we want to make sure they're safely on campus. I think that answers that question, Mr. Abe. I think it does. I think it does. And uh, Mr. Helsley, thank you so much for all of that before, information before about. Take, before you take him off, I just need to say it's his first year. And I know he has a great men mentor. Shout out to Mrs. Carmine. She's been very helpful. But uh, Mr. Helsley, from, from all of the students and, and all of the teachers to take us through Ghost Online and what you did in those two months and what you put together for Ghost Summer, uh, thank you. I, I know there's bumps in the road and there's always bumps in the road, but you manage things and, and thank you from everyone. That was great. And I think that that's an enormous point. You know, there are there are there are places all over over the country that have literally 100 people working on uh, what Mr. Helsley put together for us uh, over the, the last 12 weeks. And it was a truly amazing thing. And I think uh, so many of our parents uh, talk about how much we did as far as uh, the last 12 weeks were concerned. And uh, that was a lot of credit to the work that Mr. Helsley did uh, literally 24 hours a day. So thank you so much, Mr. Helsley. Thank you. Um, uh, we're going to we're going to take him off. Thank you, Pat. And then before we go, we do want to make sure, uh, Mr. Burke, that you know that your family is watching. So uh, Jack and Charlotte both say hello. Uh, oh, hopefully they are eating lots of sugar and oh, candy uh, and that you'll enjoy that when you get home. But uh Mr. Abe, there was a question I think I saw scrolling through there. I don't know if you're going to hit it real quick about um, Mrs. Vilsmeyer's retirement. Yes, I was going to. It was the next question. I wanted to make sure we got to Jack and Charlotte first, but the, uh, Mrs. Vilsmeyer is retiring. So what are the plans to bring in a new music director? I think that's a great question. Mrs. Vilsmeyer was here for a long time and uh, truly the, the heart and soul of the music program. Uh, and it's time for us to um, to wish her well in her retirement. And uh, I know you have some plans to uh, find uh, the next person that will be in charge of the music program at Holy Ghost. Sure. And first and foremost, thank you to Mrs. Vilsmeyer for all of those years. Uh, I know many people built the building across the street, the Holt Center. Many people had a lot of hands in it. But one of those people uh, was Mrs. Vilsmeyer and her work in building uh, our music program. We are fully committed to continuing our mu music program. We are in the process of, of uh, getting a job posting ready. 
that will be shared very soon. And um, we anticipate continuing the, the program that she built so well uh, with, by attracting a great candidate to lead that program. And, you know, I, I said I wanted to make sure that we I wanted to make sure that we got that on. So, Mr. Helsley, we're coming back to you. Uh, and uh, I just I don't want to, to leave this, but there are just a ton of great comments that are flying on the screen to uh, to make sure that everybody uh, recognizes the hard work that you did. And I, I want to make sure that you get credit for that. I, I do appreciate the fact that everyone's trying to figure out how you spell Helsley. <laughs> <laughs> because that is one of the hardest names on the planet in order to to uh, to figure out. It's tough. It took yeah. It, it took me a while. I didn't learn it till about three years ago. So, <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Helsley. And so, uh, Mr. Burke, that is uh, all of the content that we had planned to cover tonight and uh, to share with our families. I know that you have some uh, closing thoughts before we uh, say good night, and uh, sure. I'm going to leave it to you on the screen. Sure. Just a, a few announcements. One, the class of 2022, uh, parents and students should have received an email this evening from College Guidance about uh, two meetings, one on Tuesday, June 9th, and one on Wednesday, June 10th. You don't have to go to both of them. Uh, in the email is a link to select which meeting you would like to attend. They're at 6 p.m. Uh, it's about College Guidance and, and what students should be doing over the summer and thinking about as they are rising juniors. And um, that's led by Mrs. Doherty. So if you have any questions, reach out to Mrs. Doherty about that. Also, and I know it'll probably be promoted at that meeting, I think the week after, our virtual college college visits start, which are available to all students who want to attend uh, for freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. They're just an opportunity uh, to, to see a school virtually and, and get to know a little bit about a school. So um, I know I think there's 32 of them this summer, so it's a busy schedule. Thank you to college uh, guidance for that. Um, We've had a number of these town hall meetings and we, we, we hope they've been helpful. We've heard that they're helpful. Uh, it sounded like tonight that again, Mr. Helsley and Mr. Conlin shared some great information and our teachers shared some great insights into the courses we're offering over the summer. Uh, we have some planning to do. Um, and I think also maybe we all need a little bit of chance to, to, to disconnect. We're gonna do our next one near the end of July. We haven't selected an exact date, but we wanna make sure that next time we come back to you with a town hall that we have uh, some really good information about the start of the school year. So we want to make sure that we give ourselves enough time to put, to put those plans in place. We will continue to communicate with you, which is, as you should know, of utmost importance for us. So you will be getting that Monday evening weekly email. We're going to be doing an email once a week with any updates. But the next time we'll gather in a town hall will be sometime near the end of July. For the incoming freshmen, you probably remember that we we did a This Is Ghost last week, and you probably remember that we announced that the next one is next Thursday. So that series will continue, um, but town halls won't occur until the end of July. We know this is a crazy time, um, and, and we know uh, that we kind of spent a few moments where we talked about things that are going on that might have distracted us from some of uh, our, our current realities. But I think it's best to end with the points that we started with. Uh, keep praying and know that we're here for you and know that though we might not have the answers, uh, the solutions are in our young people and in education. So uh, at Holy Ghost Prep, we're going to continue to do that uh, through the summer. You know that there's those courses that we're offering, but we're also going to offer some breakthrough opportunities like we did about ghost in sports and about the disease. We're going to offer some that have conversations about race in our country so that we can hear from the young men and give them outlets to have conversations and promote civil discourse and the value of unity in our country. We hope you enjoyed tonight. We hope you learned what you needed. And if you didn't, reach out and let us know. Think Ghost.